Hello, and thank you everyone for joining Innovative Sensor Technology and Yolps Technologies for our webinar on biological analysis using enzymatic and barometric biosensors. In today's webinar, we'll explore enzymatic biosensors, walking through the chemical reactions that drive them and the measurement technique we use to measure analyte concentrations. Next, we'll review some of the different application-specific sensor configurations. We'll also take a minute to discuss some common customizations which make the sensors more useful in unique applications. Let's get started. Enzymatic biosensors are used in laboratory science, the medical field, the pharmaceutical field, food and drink preparation, and more. Now we'll go a little more in depth about how they work. So biosensors, what are they? First, let's define a few terms. Enzymatic biosensors measure the concentration of certain analytes in a medium. An analyte is a substance or chemical constituent that is of interest during an analytical procedure. Simply put, it's what you want to measure. Enzymes are biological molecules which act as catalysts and help complex and specific reactions occur everywhere in life. So what are we measuring when we're using a biosensor? We're measuring the concentration of our target analyte, that is, how much of an analyte is dissolved in our medium. Let's take an example, like how much sugar is dissolved in a sample of Coke. We have 10.6 grams of fructose and glucose per 100 milliliters. Therefore, our concentration equals 10.6 grams divided by 100 milliliters which comes out to 106 grams per liter. There are a few units that you'll work with when measuring analyte concentration in your media. Some common ones are grams per liter, milligrams per deciliter, and millimolar. Unlike grams per liter and milligrams per deciliter, which tell us how much mass is dissolved in our medium, a concentration in millimolar tells us how many molecules are dissolved. We can convert between the two pretty easily when the molecular weight is known. In our Coke example from before, our concentration was 106 grams per liter. We know that the molecular weight of the sugar in our sample is 180.16 grams. Therefore, we can divide and express our concentration as 0 0.58 molar or 580 millimolar. One important thing to keep in mind when working with enzymatic biosensors is that the enzymes are highly specific meaning they'll only bind with specific substrates. Let's take a look at this example below. We have the substrate which represents our analyte. It comes into contact with our enzyme and binds. Then a chemical reaction takes place and the products of the reaction exit the active site of the enzyme. This idea of specificity is very important when it comes to enzymatic biosensing technology. Let's take a look at the four main analytes that can be measured with IST's biosensors. We have glucose, lactate, glutamine, and glutamate. Each of them requires a different enzyme for the appropriate reaction to take place. Glucose oxidase for glucose, lactate oxidase for lactate, glutamate oxidase for glutamate, and glutaminase for glutamine. 
The key for our measurement is to obtain hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2, as one of the reaction products. We'll explain this a little more in the next two slides. You may have noticed that in the table, hydrogen peroxide is not one of the products for the glutamine and glutaminase reaction. Therefore, if you want to measure glutamine concentrations, you'll need to have two enzymes present, glutaminase and glutamate oxidase. Now, let's talk about that hydrogen peroxide. Platinum is well known for its catalytic properties. Hydrogen peroxide is oxidized by platinum if an electric potential is applied. At IST, we use 450 millivolts with our electronics. Two electrons are freed during the reaction. The resulting current is what we'll measure and what we'll convert into an analyte concentration in our software. The two are proportional. Here, let's take a closer look at what's going on with a glucose-glucose oxidase reaction. Here, our glucose reacts with the oxidase. One of our products is hydrogen peroxide. Next, our hydrogen peroxide, with the assistance of the platinum electrode and the working potential of 450 millivolts, lets off two electrons, which we then measure. This very, very small current is usually on the order of nanoamps. Now, let's take a look at a typical enzymatic biosensor. Here, we have a simplified version of the IV4 strip type sensor from Yopes Technologies. There are different variations of biosensors which we'll discuss, but almost all of them rely on this measurement principle. The three key components are the working electrode, the reference electrode, and the counter electrode. The enzyme is deposited and immobilized on top of the working electrode. The reference electrode sets a stable reference potential. And an electrical current flows between the counter electrode and working electrode. Let's have a closer look at the glucose reaction over the working electrode. Here we can see our semi-permeable membrane layers. The glucose oxidase is immobilized above the platinum electrode. The glucose passes through the membrane layers and reacts with the glucose oxidase, letting off hydrogen peroxide and generating a small current when in contact with the platinum electrode. But how do we measure this very small current and convert it into an analyte concentration? For this, we use a potentiostat device. This controls the potential difference between a working and reference electrode by adjusting the voltage at a counter electrode. The device measures the current in the working electrode For the 6 transmitter from Yopes Technologies, pictured in the corner, the potential across the counter and working electrode is continuously adjusted, so our potential at the working and reference electrode is the predefined 450 millivolts that I mentioned before. Yopes and IST have two popular standard sensor styles. First up, we have the IV4 dip-in sensor strip. These are suitable for dip-in or probing applications. One example where these might be used is during online measurement of cell culture media from a bioreactor. The two standard electrode arrangements are typically glucose and blank or lactate and blank. The blank electrode has no enzyme immobilized near it 
and it's just there to provide a reference measurement without the chemical reaction. This helps us to cancel out any noise or any offset from our measurement. Next, we have our flow-through cells. The flow-through biosensors are best suited for applications where media is pumped through a system. For example, an offline analyzer for harvested cell culture media. The LV5 flow-through sensor is available with a few different flow cell geometries and has two standard electrode arrangements. First, we have blank glucose, and lactate electrodes, two of each. With this, we'll get two glucose and two lactate concentration outputs in our software. Next, we have the 4-analyte LV5, which gives us glucose, lactate, glutamine, and glutamate concentrations, all on one chip. Here is what your results might look like with the 4-analyte LV5. We've pumped different analytes through the flow cell for simultaneous measurement. You can see here how the sensor rapidly responds to concentration changes for each analyte. The included software with our transmitter is called Biomon, and it can be downloaded for free from the IST website. Now, let's talk about a more specialized sensor. For cell culture or cell growth applications, it's important to have a sterile sensor which won't contaminate the culture media. For an inline measurement, it should also interface well with the bioreactor vessel. Yopes Technologies has recently developed a pre-sterilized glucose sensor probe for use with single-use bioreactor systems. Here, we can see the specs for this sensor. It's most suitable for small bioreactor vessels that have a 13.5 PG port, but it can be customized for a larger vessel. It measures well up to six grams per liter and transmits the data to the six transmitter using a vario pin cable. The key advantage with this probe is that the whole entire sensor and probe assembly has been gamma radiated so it's sterile for use in cell culture applications. Now, let's talk about customization. Both the strip type and flow through sensor can be configured differently for different analytes. For example, a custom strip sensor can be developed for measuring both glucose and lactate. It will require adding another working electrode. The sensor electrode and membrane layers could also be customized to house more enzyme content, potentially allowing for an extended operational lifetime. How about custom dimensions? The strip type sensor's length and width can be easily customized to suit the customer's application. The fabrication flow is very flexible to accommodate different geometries for our electrodes, traces, and substrates. For the flow-through sensor, the flow cell geometry can be changed to allow for different flow rates. The electronics and the connection interface can also be customized. Yopes Technologies and IST can work directly with customers who have unique measurement applications. Often, we'll help them with developing new transmitter versions, which are custom tailored to their specific needs. And that does it for biological analysis using enzymatic amperometric biosensors. Along with these biosensors, Innovative Sensor Technology is also a provider of standard and custom sensors for temperature, humidity,
flow, and conductivity measurement. We invite you to visit our website, www.ist-ag.com, and reach out to us to discuss your application. Our technical staff can discuss our many standard products and give you insight into our simple customization process. On our website, you'll also find many product-specific data sheets and application notes. Thank you everyone for watching, and again, feel free to contact us anytime to discuss your sensing needs. You can now reach us 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, on our website's live chat.